Hey guys, Duan here. Just hoping that you guys had a really great uh, holiday weekend. I know I did, even though I spent most of it working. Uh, but look at for me, I was in a bar, so it was still pretty fun. Anyways, today I want to talk about my very first day in Guinea. If you guys remember from the last video, um, I talked about just some of the feelings that I had in getting ready to go to Guinea. I talked about feeling frustrated, anxious, uh, and excited, and a lot more emotions running through my head. And for my flight over to Guinea, it was pretty much the same thing, especially since I got to spend a lot of time with the other volunteers. We were pretty much traveling for close to 24 hours from Philadelphia to New York City to Belgium to the Gambi, and then finally to Guinea. We got to spend a lot of time just talking about our own goals, what we wanted to accomplish, some of the things we were worried about, and just um, what do we think would change in two years um, before we, I think we all eventually just ended up taking a long nap before getting to uh, Guinea. I remember in the last hour or so um, on the flight I got changed into some nicer clothes. My idea was you know I wanted to look maybe a little decent for whoever was picking me up from the airport. I wasn't really thinking about too much. I didn't think we would be doing too much on the very first day because it's just always your arrival, you're getting settled, uh, trying to uh, um, just get adjusted to your new surroundings. And that <laughs> was probably uh, not the greatest thing for me to do because I should have been pre preparing myself a little bit more for um, what I would encounter outside the airport or better yet, inside the airport. You see. In the terminal, it's air conditioned, which meant when I put on my shirt and my uh, dress shirt and pants and um, everything else, like I I was feeling decent, you know, 70 degrees inside the terminal. But in customs, which is outside the terminal, there was no air conditioning. And Guinea is a very humid country for the most part. So it went from being, you know, around 70 degrees to perhaps higher than 90 at 100% humidity. And for someone from California, uh, any sort of humidity is too much humidity. So <laughs> I was actually in line at customs for like one quick minute um, before I was like, you know what guys, can you just hold my spot? I, I had to step away from everyone else and I went to the window, which I thought would be a little bit cooler, but for some reason it wasn't because I guess that's how humidity works. Uh, I was just trying to catch my breath, stay cool, stay calm, but I was sweating. Like the, I was getting um, water spots already on my outside shirt just from how much water was like dripping from my body. I was like starting to feel uncomfortable, um, maybe starting to feel a little nauseous at the same time. But I, I looked over and I saw the other volunteers were going through the same thing. Um, people had paper or binders out trying to fan themselves, trying to keep cool. Um, other people were just sweating a lot, drinking water as much as they could. This poor little boy actually ended up throwing up in line, and which made this whole situation even more uncomfortable was that uh, nobody ever came to clean it up. It didn't seem like the mom even bothered to tell anyone. She just kind of left it there. And so, <laughs> imagine us, we're just like all thinking, what are we getting ourselves into? Luckily, we, we made it through customs without a problem. Everybody had their passports. We got our luggage without a problem and then finally we stepped outside and for the first time we saw what Guinea looked like. Uh, to me it was I think a rainy day, it was just very muggy, you know again 100% humidity and I w was sweating, I thought it was going to be better going outside but uh, again that's not how humidity works. Uh, luckily our bus came and our bus was air conditioned. I made the choice to sit by a window which uh, in retrospect I kind of regret now because I didn't know what type of trip this bus would be taking me in. Imagine, imagine going to a theme park and you're looking to go on a kiddie ride and instead you end up going on a roller coaster and that's basically what the bus ride was like. Uh, we went through some of the most crowded parts of the city for 30 to 40 minutes no uh, stoplights, nothing <laughs> at all that said uh, where um, our Peace Corps compound was. And somehow this bus 
didn't get us killed. This bus driver didn't get us killed. Amazingly, you know, we were going through places where it seemed like only one car could fit in a lane, but two cars were sharing it. Um, there were cars that were driving up on the sidewalk on the road. Um, that wasn't a road. Uh, there were people walking in and out carrying, you know, 50 pounds of stuff on their heads. Um, I was just speechless the entire time. I was like, oh my God, we're going to kill someone. Um, again, I was feeling sick. You know, we were just swerving in and out of traffic and cars and people. Um, I was convinced we were going to hit someone. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> and for, again, for about 30 to 40 minutes, this is what it was like. And I was trying to also understand like where we were. I was like appreciating what it was. I saw, you know, Conakry. I had seen Conakry in Google Images, but now this is my first time seeing it. It was exciting. You know, I was seeing marketplaces, uh, a ton of different styles of clothing, uh, thousands and thousands of people speaking uh, a lot of different languages that you could hear even through the bus. And I was excited, but still uh, the constant a jerking of the bus <laughs> really made me unable to focus too much on it. <laughs> and uh, the funniest thing was when we stopped at the Peace Corps compound and we finally got out, I actually took a few dollars and gave the bus driver uh, a tip. Uh, <laughs> I was like, here, thank you. You did a really good job. Uh, thanks for not killing anyone. <laughs> Little did I know that that driver was actually one of Peace Corps' permanent drivers. So I would be seeing him constantly for uh, regularly for the next two years, and uh, <laughs> and you couldn't even exchange like the two or three dollars that I gave him. Uh, nobody would exchange two or three dollars. It had to be in larger den denominations like fives, tens, twenties, something like that. <laughs> but uh, our Peace Corps compound is this huge place. There was um, the office building, and then the Peace Corps volunteer house, and the director's house, and administrative officer's house across the street. So you have these four buildings that are all beautiful, very large, and um, most importantly, air conditioned. This was finally like the first time where we could walk around in an air conditioned area, um, talk to each other. It wasn't like we had something immediately to do. And finally, like we were able to go into uh, the Peace Corps a library room, which I think is an essential part of like most Peace Corps compounds. There's a library room. Peace Corps volunteers just love to read books. And here we are, like 22 or 23 of us, just like sitting in this air-conditioned room and saying like, wow, finally here, guys. <sighs> now what? <laughs> so that was pretty much our first day in Guinea. I think we ended up with maybe a, a big dinner with our Peace Corps administrators and then playing a lot of cribbage, chit-chatting and just basically relaxing. I think all of us took advantage of the nice uh, hot showers that they had there in the Peace Corps compound. And then we pretty much just fell asleep pretty easily waiting for the next day. Um, I think we were all pretty excited. I know I was, and again, just anxious. Pretty much the same feelings that we were having before we even started the trip. All right, guys, so that was uh, my very first day in Guinea. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Okay, guys. Have a good one. Bye.